The lamb is in heaven right now. So the 144,000 are following Jesus wherever he's going. And he is roaming over top of the earth realm. He is investigating his churches. He's investigating everything. The church may be actually with him at this point. We don't know. We're not going to argue over that. We're not going to separate and break fellowship on that point. But at this point, the lamb is standing, but here the lamb is moving. He's going here. He's going there. He's the wheels within the wheels. His eyes are everywhere. He can see everything. And they follow him. Critical. Because I'm going to make an application to you today that you making a five-year plan, 10-year plan, 20-year plan is not following the lamb wherever he goes. Paul didn't have a plan. If you read Paul, I think it's in, uh, I have to, this just jumped into my mind, so I thank the Holy Spirit for it, but I think it's Corinthians. I would to come to you, but I, the Apostle Paul, he, he couldn't really know where he's going to be in two years. He got knocked around all over the place. He had one purpose, to take the gospel to the Gentiles, to kings and rulers, and to the men of Israel. Now I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia. It may be that I will remain or even spend the winter with you, that you may spend, send me on my journey wherever I go. This is 1 Corinthians 16, verse 5 and 6. Wherever I go. He don't know until he gets to Macedonia. And then from there, he's going to stay maybe a certain amount of time, a winter. It would be smart because he don't want to be in a sea at winter time. It's too, the weather's too bad. And then after that, I don't know what's going to happen next. Right? For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you. I hope to stay. I don't know if I'm going to stay. I hope to stay with you for a while, if the Lord permits, if the Lord wills, if I get that nice time with my fellow brethren. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. That's one thing he's sure about, because he wants to celebrate with the Jews the Feast of Pentecost. You know, these certain things that Paul was dedicated to, Passover, Pentecost, and the, and the Feast of Tabernacles. He was determined to go certain places, certain times, to meet the Jews when they were gathered in large numbers. For a great and effective door has been opened to me, and there are many adversaries. And if Timothy comes, see that he may be with you without fear. For he does the work of the Lord as I also do. Therefore let no one despise him, but send him on his journey in peace, that he may come to me, for I am waiting for him with the brethren." So, there again, you follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Paul was following the Lamb wherever He led. We were led to North Carolina to do something for God. We are hanging on strictly and only by faith. We've been supernaturally blessed in the, in the last 24 hours with a unique gift from our town. And it's, it's, it's amazing to help us with our Christmas time. But it was supernatural the way God brought it about. And I just want you to know that when you follow the Lamb, it may not look good for you at certain points along the way, but you will not lack. You will not lack, especially if you're a family man with children. The Lord's going to take care of you until it gets to the really, really bad times at the end, and we will lose our family members. But right now, the Lord's teaching us faith. He's building into us character, hope. And that hope does not disappoint, for it sheds abroad in our hearts the love of God. And that love was in the 144,000 so that they could not but follow the Lamb wherever He went. What's the next characteristic? They were redeemed among men being first fruits to God. Just like Jesus, the first fruits of the resurrection. We're to give to the Lord the tithe, the first fruits of our increase, of our increase, the firstborn of our house, our children. They belong to God. That's what we've recognized in our, in our house. They belong to God. They, they are not yours. And it says in verse 5, In their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I'm going to stop there. It's, it's um, long enough. I hope that be watchful, be prayerful. For your adversary, the devil, Peter said that. Be watchful, be prayerful. Be sober-minded, be vigilant, be aware. Peter said that. Jesus said, watch and pray, for you know not what hour I will come. And coming could be a horrible persecution in your land or your area. Coming could be a, a sudden attack, um, you know, an explosion, uh, a hurricane. 
We don't know what that coming is going to be, but we need to get in the mindset right now in the church of Jesus Christ. We need to get in the mindset of tapping into where the lamb is and doing whatever the lamb wants us to do. Back there behind me is a cross. It is in the way of the cross, as it were, hanging yourself, your will, your desire, your self-protection. You are dead and you hang on that cross, man of God, woman of God. You and I, the only way we're going to be perfected and find no fault before the throne of the Lord is to hang on that cross and leave that flesh man, that old man, there and not pick him up again. Guys, young people, listen to me. There's no shortcut to bringing back the glory of God to the earth realm. It is by determined uh, focus on Christ and 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you are determined to know Christ. There's no room for playing right now. We're going into one of the hardest seasons in my life. I'm 45. I, the next, if I live 30 years, it's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy. The nations are going to be realigning and, and the one world system is going to be established whether you like it or not. You can't stop what God's going to allow to happen here. So it says in Revelation, as we get to the end and these bold judgments are going to be released, those who are destined for captivity, to captivity they will go. And those who want to you know, exercise or use the sword, they will die with the sword. We are getting ready to prepare the land and our children and our friends for a time of great persecution against the true people of God. But we have this one thing holding out there, one, one hope that if we are faithful, if we are holy, if we are blameless, if there's no guile in our mouth, if we are following the land, we have this hope that we could be like Enoch and we are not, like Elijah who went up in a chariot of fire. We could, we could have that. We love the idea of rapture, but it's only to the 144,000 like characteristics. They are undefiled, they are chaste, they are tapped into Christ, very attentive to his voice, and they are, they are not blemished by deceit. They are honest people, and they are humble and meek like Moses. So please, dear people, if you want to be encouraged today, get in deeper, dig down, and sit down deeper in the way of Christ. Don't get this tepid attitude that, oh, I'm going to run off here, run off there. I'm going to run with this ministry. If they don't like that, then I'm going to run. Lock into a ministry. Lock into a team. Build a ministry team that is ready to do the work because Jesus is going to start picking up the base as he starts to strategically gather his chosen ones. And we are going to preach the gospel with such power. Signs and wonders will follow this generation. Praise God.